The following presentation is brought to you as a courtesy from Forex Academy. This is part of our service, Advanced Technical Analysis Course. If you find it interesting and wish to be updated on new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our community at forex.academy and receive all our services for free. Your like is also highly appreciated. Enjoy. So if we go back to this chart, we discussed planning the trade. Now to really just recap some elements that we've gone through thus far, we've made certain decisions. We could have said to ourselves, okay, if we were looking to trade the breakout to the downside, let's assume that that was your other trading decision. You are not going to, even though in this particular illustration, it would have proved to have been a good decision trading a short position at this point to preempt this pattern is a risky option. What could happen is that the market trades down, finds support, and then starts to push higher. In that instance, neither the double top nor the trend line break has developed. So for you to manage, if price action moved higher because what you don't know is whether a subsequent rebound is just temporary and then the market ultimately moves lower so you would be to a degree at the market's mercy however if your decision had been to go short at that particular point it would be very important that you establish your risk parameter which is very clearly the most recent high and you would then have to wait and see what happens you may say to yourself okay if we find support I'm willing to risk an outcome that the market trades all the way back to these highs but there'd be a lot of day-to-day -day managing of the price action day-to-day -day managing of your emotional views on the market and perhaps would make it slightly more difficult to maintain a more objective stance if you were looking to go short, then the more prudent approach would be to not preempt the pattern and wait for the breakout. And we'll look at one or two opportunities in terms of considerations that could have been made with that view in mind. So don't look at preempting a pattern it makes for somewhat more risky trading. Wait for confirmation. Identify your confirmation. In other words, the midpoint will confirm the pattern. We also have the trend line that provides us with some additional information in terms of confirming a reversal in trend. Be able to establish your risk parameters, essential for every single trade that you take on board, and then also determine whether price projections are possible. Now you'll recall from the discussions that we had earlier this week when it came to price patterns, the one advantage of price patterns is that you can identify price objectives based on the pattern. And in the case of a double top, we take the highest point in the double top, subtract it from the midpoint, and then project that distance down. And we have a horizontal line over here that is based on the projection of the pattern. Now, Take note that pattern projections are generally seen as minimum objectives. So there is also a risk that prices will move beyond the first price objective. Note two, just in terms of highlighting and observing additional information, that it is interesting to note the price projection based on the pattern coincides with some historical important support levels as can be seen in this area in price action. So that further reinforces this element, price projection, as potentially an element of support if prices get there. You can see from this double top reversal that we haven't yet seen the market achieve the objective, but clearly the trend, at least for now, remains bearish. 
So are price projections possible? Yes, they are. We take the distance of the top of the double top down to the midpoint and we project that lower. That then gives you an illustration of how you can apply the ability to identify price patterns, first of all, to observe conditions in the market that will allow you to maintain a forward thinking logic with respect to preparing yourselves for possible outcomes. It will then also allow you to make an evaluation of the trend. Do I continue to trade in the direction of the trend? Or am I somewhat concerned that the reversal will indeed take place? And I'm starting to shift my focus to being a bear in this example. I will then wait for confirmation and I'll understand what needs to be done once that confirmation has been delivered, if indeed that is the case. If we just go back to the chart for one final comment, and that is how would we have traded the break? Now, some breaks are easier to trade than others. Admittedly, this would not have been a very easy midpoint break to trade because the market made it perhaps a little bit more difficult to execute any decision making around the way price action behave. We can very clearly see, just zoomed in a little bit into price action, how the market broke in a strong impulsive manner below the midpoint, having one or two days prior to that broken below the trend line support. The only probably easiest level to or easiest area to consider a trade would have been during this period over here because the risk parameters in terms of identifying the risk parameters may have been quite wide initially following the break of the midpoint. And why that, why that statement is important is because if we look at the price projection, we have an idea of where the market can go. If we go short at this level and we trade, let's say, against a risk at that point, then we need to ask ourselves, is there a two to one risk reward ratio? In this instance, the answer is still yes. The distance is quite far. That may lead you to take on board more additional risk than you are prepared on a particular trade. There's no uh, specific answers to the decision making. These are just concepts that you need to consider. And you may say to yourself, well, if that is the case, yes, I need to wait for a second opportunity. And if we were then just to follow price action, we would have potentially been, a, been able to identify an opportunity during this period of consolidation over here. Now, from a pattern perspective, we clearly know that the trend is down. We've had a period of consolidation. We could then perhaps say to ourselves, this has taken on the appearance of a flag formation. You'll recall that one of the patterns that we looked at when we were considering continuation patterns was a flag. Flag is simply a situation where the market has, in this instance, been trending down, consolidates for a period of time, it's regarded as a continuation pattern, and ultimately, this should lead to further downward pressure in price action. So the existence of that pattern is in line with the underlying conditions that exist in the market. Having established a potential opportunity to trade, either on a breakout or a pullback, if we assume the more conservative level on a breakout, you could use the top of the flag formation as your risk parameter because remember one thing that we need to observe about continuation patterns is that price action should be impulsive once it confirms the breakout in the direction of the trend. We know that perhaps our price objective is down at this level and there is still an acceptable two to one ratio on this particular trade. The one lesson to take from this final point is that even though you correctly identify conditions in the market, you can correctly pinpoint when those conditions are confirmed, you may still not be able to actually execute any trades around that underlying view. 
Risk management is absolutely essential. You always need to identify your risk parameters and you need to then ask yourself, is this from a risk perspective an opportunity that I'm prepared to take on board? If on the other hand, we've had perhaps a scenario, if we take this as the break over here to equate that point and the market perhaps defined what is known as a return move where we move back to the breakout point and then we sold off, you would have perhaps had a, an early opportunity to consider a short position against a clearly defined risk parameter. Alternatively, prior to the break, because this was a very impulsive sell-off, if we had had more of a defined sequence of lower lows and lower highs, you could have been comfortable trading the break of the neckline with a stop loss above the clearly defined risk parameter. Market conditions are going to be different from one case to the next. There are multiple um, challenges that you're faced with when it comes to price action, but also just bear in mind that you sometimes need to accept that having evaluated the market correctly, you've unfortunately not been able to capitalize on that move. That is just the reality of trading. Okay, so that concludes our focus on looking at managing a price pattern and capitalizing on your observation. We're going to now shift our focus to trading the trend, which was a topic in this week's webinars as well. Remember that technical analysis is the study of price. Therefore, it is important for us to understand all aspects relating to price. If so, this will improve your effectiveness in being able to identify conditions of strength and weakness in market activity, something that we also can achieve from our focus on price patterns. Trend is an absolutely essential component in financial markets. And as an extension of understanding price, we need to be aware of all the aspects relating to trend. Trend following generally is regarded as the best way to trade the markets. And from an educational perspective, we will approach the market with this logic. From a trend trading perspective, what we will look at now in terms of applying is firstly the definition of a trend. We will bring into the discussion how the slope of a moving average can improve our evaluation of the market. We will look at momentum to identify fine-tuning opportunities around timing aspects. And we will bring this all together to develop a trading strategy. So we will look at answering the what to trade question by identifying opportunities, where, in other words, at what price level, and how bring all of these components together to develop the ultimate strategy. Our focus will be on current price action in the euro, or rather in the euro against the US dollar. And our first observation that we will look at is just simply to look at the chart that we have in front of us and ask ourselves the question that we need to ask ourselves at the outset each and every time, what is the trend that I am dealing with? Very clearly, the trend that we are or have been witnessing for some time now is a very clear downtrend. From our focus of analysis, we will begin our analysis and trading considerations from a bearish perspective. So this is very important. Establish the direction of the trend. In this instance, the trend has been down. Therefore, our first observation from a trading opportunity will be looking at selling price action. In other words, if we then focus our attention on the most recent price action, which is currently sitting at the level highlighted by the blue horizontal line, our question will be, does this offer an opportunity to sell for a resumption of the downtrend? That is our starting point. 
We can state it another way, establish your directional bias. That will be a function of what you observe from trend. And you need to establish that directional bias because it will dictate the trading direction you will take on board. Therefore, we will start off our discussion by approaching this market looking for selling opportunities. Now, we're going to zoom in on more recent activity and we will begin our discussion in terms of how we evaluate price action using some of the concepts that will become relevant. Now, this is the chart that you just looked at in front of you and you can clearly see that the trend is down. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to zoom in to more recent price action so that we can perhaps get a clearer idea of what we are actually dealing with here. Now, clearly the trend is down. The one component that we applied and we saw both yesterday and on Tuesday is to consider getting some reinforcing evidence with respect to trend from the slope of the moving average. Before we do that though, let's just evaluate some key trend components in this particular chart. You can clearly see that the market is trending down. If we just focus on the more recent activity from this high, we can see that the market continues to define a sequence of lower lows and lower highs as the market then continues to travel south or in a downward direction. So with the trend very clearly down, we are also able to identify our important turning points and whether these represent key risk parameters as well for any decision making that we might take on board. So that's the first observation that we make with respect to price, identifying the sequence of lower lows and lower highs. The next tool that we can bring on board, and we will just look to insert a moving average. And I'm simply gonna take, this is an hourly chart that we're looking at, a 100 hour moving average to make an observation of the slope of the average. Now you can clearly see that apart from perhaps this portion over here, the slope of the moving average has been down. Therefore, we have two pieces of information that translate to a bear trend. We have a sequence of lower lows and lower highs and we have a sloping moving average that is highlighting a negative slope. The slope of the moving average is a trend identifier and therefore both are in agreement. So we are clearly dealing with a downtrend. The next piece of information that we can bring into the picture is to identify whether we can apply any tool to fine tune where we can consider trading at various points in this downtrend. It's one thing saying that the market is trending down. It's, very, it's another thing entirely coming to a point where you can identify when to trade in the direction of that trend. And we do this by bringing into the picture an oscillator or an indicator. Remember, these are generic terms. So we would use the relative strength index and just apply a simple 14 period index to price action can see that in the lower portion of the chart. Now, just to recap on some of the uh, techniques that we applied over the course of this week, you will remember that if the market is trending down, ideally what we would like to do is to sell when both price and our momentum oscillator is moving in a downward direction. That combination highlights a strong trending condition. We recall from our discussions about the relative strength index is that it is a percentage value in terms of its calculation and it oscillates from the lower end up to the upper end. In this instance, we're using 60 and 40 as the parameters for overbought above 60 and oversold below 40. But our appreciation of the way in which the oscillator moves really just oscillates from a lower extreme to a higher extreme is that we would prefer to be in a situation where we were selling the market at a point where the momentum oscillator 
was at the upper end of the extreme because the market is trending down. We therefore have greater territory to see momentum travel downwards with price action moving in a downward direction. If we sell where the market is oversold or the indicator is oversold, there's less potential for the momentum oscillator to move lower and the risk is that we may find ourselves in a position where price action is moving down but the momentum oscillator is moving in an upward motion. This doesn't mean that price action cannot continue to move down. However, it creates a scenario where the likelihood of an impulsive move to the downside is reduced. That outcome could still be possible, but the chances are less likely. Therefore, when markets are trending down, overboard conditions offer more attractive trading opportunities than oversold. In an, up, in an uptrend, it is the reverse situation. We could just test a few observations. We can see in this particular instance how on three occasions the market moves into overbought territory, roughly as in terms of an estimate through these areas over here. Obviously, there's been a delay in terms of the market reinserting the bearish outlook, but eventually that is reinstated. If you had sold on the first opportunity, like all trades, you need to assess your risk parameter. Whether or not that risk parameter would have held on this pullback uh, is debatable at this stage. We're not quite sure where the stop loss would be, um, but remember that it is very important that you have highlighted your risk parameter. The risk parameter may have been just high enough or may have been a little lower, correctly so, leading to you being stopped out. If we look at this instance over here where the market is overbought at roughly that area, price action holds below recent highs to resume the downtrend. Here the market is overbought once again and very quickly it reinstates the downtrend. So a, just a very quick observation on price in terms, of, in terms of highlighting the components that we looked at over the course of the week. We can see that the relationship between the sloping moving average and the trend, i.e. being down, we can go ahead and use the overbought readings to sell the market. We now arrive at our most recent element and let's assume that we were monitoring the market on this recovery. We notice that at this point, price action becomes overbought, roughly at that point over there. Therefore, we can say to ourselves, anything from this level and higher represents a potential selling opportunity. Why is that? Because the trend remains down, the slope of the moving average remains down, and we have entered overbought territory on our momentum indicator, and that provides our timing in terms of making the decision when to execute a trade in the direction of the trend. As always, it would have been essential to identify your risk parameter. One option around the risk parameter is to use the most recent corrective high. If we extend that across, that would mark your stop loss. So we have a strategy in place. Now, it's not important as to whether you were around to trade at that level or whether you woke up this morning and you saw this development. What is important is that you're able to correctly assess the implications of what you see in front of you. Let's assume that we don't have a trade on board at the moment. However, we've noticed that We've identified the point at which the market was overbought from a price perspective. And we can say to ourselves, well, if we were happy to sell at that particular point, then we should be happy to sell at anything higher. If I'd gone short at that particular point, where would my risk parameter have been? Let's assume that we use this particular high, the most recent corrective high, 
as our risk parameter, which ultimately led to a resumption of the downtrend. We're coming into the picture now, and price action is currently trading at this level. Therefore, we can say to ourselves, with conditions not having changed from a trend perspective, I'm happy to go short currently and execute a short position. My stop loss will be placed at this level. Now, you have some additional information that you wouldn't have had had you traded at that particular level. But even if you had traded at that particular level, this information is now relevant to you. The market has, yes, indeed, traded up to close to that resistance and is now showing signs of pulling back. Therefore, that's encouraging from a trading perspective. However, if things turn around and the market moves higher, remember, you need to be forward thinking. Correct analysis allows you to be forward thinking. Then not only will you be stopped out of your position and you'll be stopped out early. Remember, what we want to do from a trading perspective is to maximize profits and minimize losses. If we do trade above our stop loss level and we don't close the position, then we're widening the loss that we take unnecessarily, the loss that we take on this particular position. It's so very important that you're always able to identify where your risk parameter is. With price action currently pulling lower, and let's assume that we have gone short, we can clearly place our stop loss above this horizontal line. What we need to wait and see now is what takes place. We can see that momentum is starting to pull away from its overbought territory. Our target will be a minimum level of the recent lows, but because we believe that the trend is still down, we expect it to move lower. Therefore, selling at this level with a stop loss at that point gives us a very favorable risk reward opportunity on this trade. So from a trending perspective and a trading perspective, this trade consideration should be seen as a very attractive opportunity to go short euro dollar. We've been able to identify the trend. We've used a number of components to further reinforce the direction of that trend. And we are effectively applying a tool that improves our timing element of when to trade the market. If you can become comfortable with using these various tools and techniques, you've actually developed a strategy. But also, even from a discretionary perspective, you've gone a step further in terms of maintaining a more objective overview of market conditions. What it'll also allow you to do is to be forward thinking in your overview. If, for example, we see a situation, again, this is just hypothetical, but it is something that we will prepare ourselves for, whereby let's say the market does pull back as it is currently doing, but it manages to, for the most part, roughly hold above the average. And let's say that the momentum oscillator then winds down into overbought territory, oversold territory. If price action then stabilizes and starts to move higher and actually breaks above this level, and we also begin to see a positive sloping moving average develop, and the market starts to push higher from this overbought territory, then the relationship firstly between the momentum oscillator and price action would appear to be reversing, in other words, highlighting a buying opportunity. We'd also notice that the slope of the moving average will be turning positive. And if we break above this level, then we would clearly be dealing with a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. In other words, the trend direction will have shifted from being a dominant downtrend to now highlighting a more bullish condition. So by applying these tools, we are also aware of what can develop to perhaps highlight any warning signs in price action with respect to a possible threat to the trend. We'll obviously only deal with those conditions if and when 
they do develop. But the ability to correctly apply tools and techniques and technical analysis also positions you for any future possible outcomes. Just to recap some of the issues that we've highlighted. Firstly, trend definition is key when looking to trade the trend. You can apply the slope of your moving average, and that is an effective way to further define the trend. Indicators, such as the relative strength index, can help identify when to trade in the direction of the trend. Use all of the information to assess price, price activity and think ahead as well. That concludes our webinar today. We've seen two practical applications. The first one was a focus on applying price patterns to evaluating direction and also developing trading strategies. We then looked at trading the trend by applying the definition of a trend, the slope of a moving average, and fine tuning the timing element through the use of a momentum indicator. If you can become familiar with these various tools and techniques, you are fast on track to being able to develop your trading strategy as well as maintaining a more objective overview of market conditions. What we tried to do with respect to today's workshop is to illustrate incorporating technical analysis into a solid trading plan, show you how you can develop robust skills necessary to read market conditions, and some thoughts around these various tools, techniques, and topics. That concludes week two of the Advanced Technical Analysis course in the next webinar, which will be on Monday. We will look at the subjects of technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and sentiment analysis. We'll ask ourselves, or try to answer the question, why use technical analysis? look at some fundamental analysis considerations in terms of why you should incorporate that into your approach, why it's important to stay abreast of the fundamental, the fundamentals, sorry, and how that can be done and achieved, answering a very important question for you as a trader as to whether you are a technical or fundamental trader. We will then look at sentiment analysis. It's a challenge to gain information on sentiment but there are possibilities. So how we'll illustrate how you can gather information on sentiment. Very important that you are able to understand the impact of sentiment and certainly then answering the question, what is the market up to? Congratulations, you've now finished webinar eight of your advanced technical analysis course. This concludes today's webinar. It was the second of three practical workshops. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to having you on board next time. Bye for now.